and we'll have a little bit of barking dog in the background for a little bit, and then he will calm down and go to sleep. <laughs> oh, apologies for the yelping. Okay, I'm gonna pin myself. Let's start laying flat on our backs today. Hopefully you can't hear the Chewbacca noises that are coming from upstairs, but also it's really funny. <laughs> so if you can, hopefully you are also laughing. Okay. Um, so starting flat on our back. And you can take a moment to scan your body from head to toe. Notice how it feels to be resting on your back. Notice the backs of your arms and the backs of your legs. And then send your attention and your focus to your hips. Notice how your hips feel resting. Notice the front of your hips, the outside of your hips, how your glutes feel resting on your mat. Notice without judgment, no need to change or shift your body, just notice. And today we're focusing on our sacral chakra, which going from the bottom Last week we worked on the root chakra, which is the very bottom of the chakra. It's the first going up the body. The second one is the sacral chakra. And it's right around where your belly button is. It has a lot to do with our emotions and our creativity. deeper hip openers that you feel some emotions rise to the surface and that's okay, that's totally normal. When you're ready, start to draw your knees in towards your chest, rock from side to side, massage your pelvis against your mat. You can shake your head no. If you want to roll your knees wide and back together, you can. Maybe a couple in both directions. And as you pull your knees in, relax your tailbone. Relax your low back into your mat. Bring your arms out into a T position. And if you don't have space, you can bend your arms like a goalpost. Bring your legs to a reverse tabletop position. Squeeze your legs and flex your feet. Pull your belly button in and push your low back against your mat. Now keep your legs where they are um, in relationship to your, um, with keeping the 90 position. And you're gonna twist your knees over to your left. Let them gently touch and look to your right. Stay for one inhale. And use your exhale to pull your knees all the way over to your right as you turn your gaze towards your left. Thank you for your inhale. And exhale, pull your knees all the way over to your left. Look to your right. Inhale. And exhale. And continue like this for a few more breaths. And as you do, keep your eyes closed and really pay attention to how your low back feels, how your hips, how it feels to twist and start to wake up your organs. Let's go. One more on each side. And then when you're done with both on each side. You can pull your knees in towards your chest once again. If you want to rock from side to side, you can. Whatever feels comfortable for you. And then bring your legs to a 
reverse tabletop position once again. Inhale your arms up towards the ceiling. Exhale, drop your right heel down, extend from your hips. And then exhale, pull your knee back to center. Inhale, extend your left. Exhale, pull your knee back in. And again, inhale your right. Exhale, lift. Inhale your left. Exhale, lift. Now, if you want to move your opposite arm, you're welcome to. Extend your arm away and then pull back in. Extend your opposite arm and leg. And then exhale back together. And we'll go four more, twice more on the right and twice more on the left on your own. As you extend either your leg and or your arm, keep your belly button nice and tight. Keep your core engaged. And then when you're done with twice more on the right and twice more on the left, you can pause and hug your knees in towards your chest. This time coming into a gentle, happy baby. I recommend your two peace fingers around your big toe. Really flex your tailbone down if you want to have a gentle rock from side to side, you can. And then hold on to your hamstrings, curl yourself up into a nice tight ball. Start to rock and roll the length of your mat. And we're going to pause in our boat pose. So the next rock, you're going to pause in your boat pose, flex your feet. You can continue to hold on to your hamstrings. Or if you want to challenge your core a little bit more, you can extend your arms forward, drop your shoulders down. I personally like to have my palms up, but if you'd rather have palms face one another or palms down, you can also hold on to your shins. Pull and extend your collarbones up towards the ceiling. One more inhale. And then exhale, curl yourself up into a nice tight ball. You start to rock and roll the length of your mat again. Maybe you pause without putting your toes down. Maybe you pause on your tailbone, and then you rock back down. Let's go one more. And then exhale, boat pose once again. See if you can rock straight into it. Pull uh, your chest up towards the ceiling. Squeeze your inner thighs. Flex your feet. One more inhale. Now exhale, option to rock back and forth without holding onto your hamstrings. Um, just using your core to do the work, or you can hold on to your hamstrings. Whatever feels comfortable for you. Maybe trying a couple pauses on your tailbone, see how that feels. And then when you're ready, we're going to get a little bit more momentum to push all the way into our forward fold. If you need to use your hands, you're more than welcome to. Let your head relax, let your arms release. Just hang over your legs. You can soften your knees as much as you want. Take some deep inhales and deep exhales. Maybe using your ujjayi breath, maybe inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. For right now, whatever feels most comfortable, whatever can help you release the most. Really pay attention to your jaw. Can you shake your head yes and no? And then from here, if you want to bend your knees and hold on to the outsides of your elbows and ragdoll pose, you can. If you want to interlace your fingers and reach your arms overhead, you can. You can also interlace your fingers at the nape of your neck. That feels more comfortable for you. One more inhale. And then exhale, release your arms, bend your knees, look at your belly button. Exhale, slowly roll up, one vertebrae at a time, nice and smooth and controlled. Inhale, mountain pose, sweep your arms high. And then exhale, bring your hands to heart center, close your eyes for a moment. Feel the warmth in between your palms. Feel your feet anchored into your mat. Take a moment. To send your attention to your sacral chakra right around where your belly button is. Set an intention for your practice. Maybe it's to let go of any thoughts. Maybe it's to keep your energy at your sacral chakra. Maybe it's to connect your breath 
your body, whatever feels most appropriate for you. Inhale through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. Slowly flutter your eyes open. Inhale, mountain pose, stretch your arms high. Exhale, forward fold, lift your tailbone and let your head relax down. Release your arms. Inhale, halfway lift, plant your hands to your shins or your thighs. Anchor your shoulders down your back, glue your belly button in towards your spine and find the length. One more, inhale. Exhale, plank pose, press your hands down and step your feet back. Spread your fingers nice and wide, press your fingertips down into your mat. Hold it here for two full breaths. Puff your shoulders up towards the ceiling. Push your heels back behind you. So you feel the backs of your legs engage a little bit more. One more inhale. And then exhale, slowly lower your stomach all the way onto your mat. Untuck your toes. Inhale, sphinx pose. Press your forearms down to your mat. So your elbows stack right underneath your shoulders. And focus on pushing your chest forward, but also about tucking your pelvis under. Anchor your shoulders down your back and pull your navel in <clears throat> as you extend your chest farther forward. If you can really focus on your tailbone being tucked, you'll feel a nice little release in your lumbar spine. One more inhale. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Tuck your toes and lift your hips up and back. Inhale, bend both knees, look forward. Exhale, forward fold. Walk step or lightly cross to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, mountain pose, squeeze your arms high. Exhale, right away back into your forward fold. Lift your tailbone, let your head float down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plank pose, hands down, feet step back. Inhale, pull your shoulders forward. Exhale, slowly lower your stomach all the way onto your mat, untuck your toes. Inhale, sphinx pose, hold your sphinx pose. As you swoosh your tailbone under, press your shoulders down and reach your chest forward. Stay here in your sphinx pose, pose for two more full breaths. If you wanna rock your chin from side to side or drop your chin to your chest, you can. If that feels comfortable in your neck, you can do a couple of neck circles. One more full inhale and full exhale. And then slowly lower all the way down. Inhale, tuck your toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pause here and take a few breaths. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Pull your ribs towards one another. Careful not to arch your spine. <clears throat> Anchor your heels as close to your mat as possible. If the stretch behind your legs feels too much, you can always bend your knees. One more inhale. And then exhale, slowly step all the way forward. Take your time to travel to the top of your mat. And hang in your forward hold for two full breaths. Breathing into your hamstrings. If you need to have a soft bend in your knees, you can. Inhale, halfway lift, plant your hands to your shins to the side. Exhale, fold. Heels toe your toes to touch and leave just a sliver of space between your heels. Inhale, chair pose. Take your hips down and squeeze your arms high. Scoop your pelvis under, really pull your belly button in towards your spine. Relax your shoulders. If the um, stretch of your shoulders feels like too much, you can reach your arms forward. You can also bring your hands to heart center whatever feels comfortable for you. One more inhale. And then exhale, prayer twist. Now bring your hands to heart center. Twist to the right without hooking your elbow. So see if you can get your elbow to touch your knee. And if it doesn't touch just yet, that's okay. Keep your hips square and really squeeze in your core and your neurodominals to twist in your spine. Inhale, center. Exhale, prayer twist to your left. Just touching, gently touching your left, right elbow onto your left knee. You to make sure that your knees don't pull too far forward. Squeeze your lower abdominal. 
Inhale, chair pose. Sink your hips maybe a little bit lower than before. And then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. You can walk, step, or jump back into your chaturanga. Your choice. Elbows hug in. Inhale, upward facing dog. Pause and breathe. Lift your knees and thighs off of your mat as you drop your shoulders down your back. Lift in your abdominals for support for your low back. One more inhale. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Let your head relax. Squeeze your arms towards one another. Inhale, stretch your right leg up towards the ceiling. Keep your toes straight down to your mat. Exhale, pull your right knee to your right elbow. Inhale, lift your right leg high. Exhale, right knee to left elbow, twist over. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Pull your knee towards your chest and step your right foot through. Pause here and take a few breaths if you want to rock forward and back. Or maybe drop your knee down. Just notice how your hips feel without judgment. Just listen to maybe any wiggles or movements that they need. Inhale, crescent moon. You're going to drop your left knee down or reach the top of your foot and reach your arms high. Scoop your pelvis under to open up your hip flexors and guide your hips forward. Lift your ribs up out of your hips while keeping your shoulders down. Sometimes when we focus on lifting our ribs, our shoulders lift as well. Try and relax your shoulders down your back. Focus on the tuck of your pelvis. And without putting too much pressure on your low back, press your hips forward. Good. Releasing tension in your jaw. Sometimes when um, I focus on getting deep into my hips, I don't realize other tension that creeps into my body. So just be aware of maybe your jaw is clenching or maybe your arms or your hands are clenching. Inhale. Exhale, half splits. You're going to flex your right foot and bring your fingertips onto your mat. If you have a block and you'd like to place your hands um, underneath your block, there's three different heights of your block, so you can um, do whatever feels comfortable for you. Now take a peek at your hips. Make sure your hips are square to the front of your mat. Sometimes we like to pull our left hip back, so make sure hips are square. And flex your toes as much as you can. See if you can pull your toes as far back to your shin as possible. Now push your tailbone back behind you like you're going to come into a cow pose when you arch your back. Breathe into your hamstrings. Breathe into the muscles behind your legs. One more inhale. Exhale, low lunge. Lift your left knee off of your mat. Inhale, crescent lunge. Reach your arms high. Hold and breathe. Fingertips back right over your shoulders. Relax your shoulders down. Same thing, try and lift your ribs out of your hips. Keep your tailbone slightly tucked as you extend your left heel as far back behind you as you can. Inhale, bring your hands to heart center. Exhale, stay upright, but twist to your right. Relax your shoulders down. Keep your belly button engaged and imagine your core is like wringing out your spine like a washcloth. Really pull your right ribs back and pull your left ribs over to the side. Inhale. Exhale, warrior two. Cartwheel your hands down. Reach your arms forward and back. We'll stay here for four full breaths. Spread your toes nice and wide. Really press the four corners of your feet down to your mat. Warrior two is a good way to help open up your sacral chakra if you feel like it's a little too close. Having your hips very open in this position helps to bring energy in. Relax your shoulders down. One more inhale. And exhale. Inhale, reverse warrior. Push your knee forward and reach your right arm back behind you. Relax your shoulders down. Feel, make sure that your inner thigh of your right leg is still engaged to help push your knee over. Sometimes we don't realize that our knee is con concaving in. Lift your right ribs up just a little bit farther. Relax your right shoulder down just a little bit more. One more inhale. Exhale, triangle pose. Straighten both legs. Sometimes I need to widen or shorten my stance a little bit. 
you'll push your hips to the back as you pick up your arm to 12 and 6. If you have a block, you're welcome, or a pillow or something close by, you're welcome to use um, a block. You have three different types of your block, so whatever feels the best for you. You can also hold on to your shin or bring the back of your hand to your shin to help twist and open up just a little bit more. So oftentimes people focus on just simply touching, your, touching the mat um, in triangle pose, but then sometimes the hips will fall back behind you. You want to continue to press your hips forward, squeeze your lower abdominals, and find that same twist that we found, um, not the same twist, but opposite twist, <laughs> the same idea of using your core to help open up and wring out your spine like a washcloth, making sure your shoulders and ribs and hips are all stacked. Inhale, reverse triangle, press your hips forward, and reach your right arm back behind you. Just a gentle touch of your left hand on your left leg. You can reach be below your knee or above your knee. Try not to put too much pressure on your kneecap. One more inhale. And then exhale, low lunge twist. Cartwheel your left hand down. Reach your right arm high. Relax your shoulders. Feel your lower abdominals engage here. If you want to drop your left knee down and release the top of your foot, you're more than welcome to. Anchor your right shoulder down. Sometimes we like to lift up and we don't realize that we're internally rotating our shoulder blades. Drop your left shoulder down to turn your armpit to the side wall. One more inhale. And then exhale, plank pose. Press your hands down, step your feet back. Option to move through your flow or straight back into downward facing dog. Whatever feels most supportive for you in this moment. Downward facing dog, sit where we Inhale, lift your left leg high. Exhale, left knee to left elbow, pull your shoulders over your wrist, squeeze your abdominals, but pull your knee in. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, left knee to right elbow, twist over. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, low lunge, pull your knee towards your chest and step your left foot through. Again, take a couple breaths here if you want to rock forward and back or make some circles. Maybe drop your knee down. Don't worry about doing the exact same thing on this side. Just listen to how you feel in this moment. Release any unneeded tension in your face or your jaw. And then inhale, crescent moon, drop your right knee down, extend your arms up towards the ceiling. Squeeze your pelvis under, relax your shoulders. Stay here and breathe, continuously tucking your tailbone under, finding lift in your spine as you relax your shoulders down. Breathe into your hip flexors. Maybe some of you might feel it more in your psoas, or maybe some of you might feel it more in your quad. Just breathing into the front of your hips, continuously pushing your hips forward with each exhale, trying to sink a little bit deeper into the posture. One more inhale. And then exhale, half splits. You're going to reach your fingertips down to your mat. Push your tailbone back behind you as if you're trying to arch your low back. Direct your toes towards your shin as you pull your chest forward towards your toes. Find the length in your spine. It's less about folding over the leg and more about stretching and elongating your spine. When you focus on elongating your spine, that will give you a deeper stretch in your hip flexors. And again, if you have blocks, you're welcome to place your blocks underneath your hands if that feels more comfortable for you. One more inhale. And then exhale, low lunge, shift forward, lift your right knee off of your mat. Inhale, crescent lunge, arms high, hold for two breaths as you extend your right heel back. Scoop your pelvis under, lift your ribs, relax your shoulders down, fingers stack right over your shoulders. One more inhale. Exhale, hands to heart center and twist to your left. Keep your shoulders right over your wrist, your ribs, and use your abdominals to twist, wring out your spine like a washcloth. Pull your lower abdominals in, 
like almost like a massage for your organs. One more inhale. Exhale, warrior two, spin your right foot down, extend your arms forward and back. Take your gaze over your front fingers. Again, shoulders, ribs, and hips all stay in one long line. We'll be here for four full breaths. Sink your weight down into your feet. Using your strong ujjayi breath. Inhale and exhale through your nose. One more inhale. And exhale. Inhale, reverse warrior. Push your hips farther forward as you reach your left arm up and over. Staying engaged in your lower abdominals so that way you don't need a whole lot of support um, with your right hand on your right leg. And you also can't really sink down if you're staying lifted and supported in your abdominals. One more inhale. Exhale, triangle pose, straighten through both legs. Push your hips to the back as you tip tuck your arms to 12 and 6. Again, option to use a block, option to have your hand on your shin, fingertips to your mat, or you can turn your palm to face forward and use the back of your hand against your leg to help twist and open up. Remember, it doesn't matter how low you get, it's more on focus, the pose is more focused on the alignment of your shoulders, ribs, and hips. I said that backwards, or I demoed backwards, but I said it correctly. <laughs> look up at your fingertips if you want. You can look straight forward, or you can turn your focus down to your mat. Inhale, reverse triangle. Press your hips forward as you reach your left arm up and over. Relax your shoulders down. Two more breaths here. One more inhale, and then exhale, low lunge, twist, cartwheel, your right hand down, your left arm high. If you want to drop your right knee down, you're welcome to. You can also um, twist to look up towards the ceiling, whatever feels comfortable through your neck. Just try and relax your shoulders down without lifting too much that you're internally rotating in your left arm. One more breath. And then exhale, plank pose. Again, your twist, lower down and move through your flow, or press straight back into your downward facing dog. Nice. <clears throat> Inhale, bend both knees, look forward. Exhale, forward, fold, walk, step, or lightly hop to the top of your mat. Let the crown of your head fall down to your mat. Relax your head. Inhale, halfway lift, find length in your spine, reset your spine. Exhale, fold. We're going to do that slow once more, breath to movement, to create a little bit more heat in our body. Bring your toes to touch, inhale, chair pose, take your hips down, reach your arms high. Exhale, prayer twist to your right, just a gentle touch of your elbow to your knee. Inhale, center. Exhale, prayer twist to your left, again, just a gentle touch. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, option to walk, step, or jump back into your chaturanga. You can also step back into plank and then just lower straight down. Inhale, upward facing dog. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg high. Exhale, right knee to right elbow. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, right knee to left elbow. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Pull your knee towards your chest and step through. Inhale, crescent moon. Drop your knee down, squeeze your arms high. Exhale, half split. Inhale, crescent lunge. Shift forward, hover your right knee up or left knee up, excuse me. Exhale, twist, hands to heart center. Hold for your inhale. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Push your knee forward. Exhale, triangle pose. Extend through both legs. Inhale, reverse triangle. 
Exhale, low lunge twist. Left hand down, right arm high. One more inhale. And exhale, plank pose. Option to lower down and move to your flow or straight to downward facing dog. Nice, good. Lift up out of your low back in your upward facing dog. Inhale, lift your left leg high. Exhale, left knee to left elbow. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, left knee to right elbow. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, crescent moon. Drop your knee down and reach your arms high. Exhale, half split. Focus on the length of your chest. Inhale, crescent lunge. Shift forward, lift your right knee. Exhale, prayer twist. Keep your shoulders stacked over your hips. Stay through your inhale so you can get a little bit more twist. Exhale, warrior two. Spin your right foot down, cartwheel your hands open. Inhale, reverse warrior. Pull your ribs up and over. Exhale, triangle pose. Pull your chest forward. Inhale, reverse triangle. Exhale, low lunge twist. Right hand down, left arm high. Stay for your inhale. And exhale, plank pose. Your choice moves through your flow or straight to downward facing dog. <clears throat> inhale, bend both knees, look forward. Exhale, forward fold, walk, step or lightly hop to the top of your mat. Let your head relax. See if you can bend your knees and let your arms dangle like empty toes, please. Just pour a little bit more weight into your toes. Let gravity do some of the work here. One more inhale. And exhale. Inhale, halfway lift. Find length in your spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose. Sink your hips down. Reach your arms high. Exhale, prayer twist. This time you can hook your left elbow on the outside of your right knee. Press your palms in towards one another to find a little bit more length of your spine. Pull your belly button in like you're pulling away from a punch so you can find a little bit more space to help you rotate. Good. One more. Inhale. Stay for your exhale, get a little bit more twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist right elbow on the outside of your left knee. Continue to press your palms together. Take a peek down at your knees and hips, make sure they're still square. Sometimes my right knee likes to pull, um, or my left knee likes to pull back behind me. Make sure that your knees are still in line with one another. One more inhale. And then exhale, chair pose, reach your arms high for one more inhale. And exhale, forward fold, let your head relax. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Option to walk, step, or jump back into your chaturanga, or skip it all together and just lay flat on your stomach. Nice. Inhale, upward facing dog, open up your chest. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg high. Exhale, right knee to right elbow. Hold and breathe for three, for two, and one. Inhale, left leg, or excuse me, right leg high. Exhale, right knee to left elbow. Hold and breathe for four. Twisting your shoulders a little bit more. Two, maybe look more towards your left. And one, inhale, lift your right leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, crescent moon. Pause here and breathe. Scoop your pelvis under. Relax your shoulders down. Good. From here, bring your hands to heart center. Stay square in your hips and just twist to your left. Or excuse me, twist to your right. Relax your shoulders down. Keep your hips square. Try not to let your right hip pull back. So you really have to engage in your lower abdominals. Feel a nice deep twist in your spine. Keep your shoulders soft. Your right shoulder might want to hike up. One more inhale. 
And then exhale, half splits, unwind. Flex your foot and stretch your toes down. Hold here and take a few breaths. From here, if you want to walk your heels a little farther forward, if you want to wiggle your left knee a little farther back, if you want to slide into your full splits, you're more than welcome to. Careful, though, that you don't sink down onto your right hip. Um, different from dancer splits to yoga splits, you really want to focus on your uh, hips to be square to the front of your mat, whereas sometimes in dance, we, we can like cheat it a little bit. <clears throat> um, if you want to go like full yogi split, tuck your left toes behind you and flex your right foot. If that doesn't feel comfortable for you, just stay in your half split, do what feels best, or in a, a slight variation, maybe just extending your heel farther back behind you. Hold for one more inhale. And then exhale, slowly come back into your low lunge. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, prayer twist. This time, lean forward to hook your right elbow on the outside of your left knee. If balance feels a little challenging for you today, no worries. Just drop your right knee down for support. Good. Hold for one more inhale. Hold for your exhale. Inhale, crescent lunge, unwind, arms reach high. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, triangle pose. Hold here and breathe. Good. So from your triangle pose, if you want to stay here and hang, you're welcome to. If you want to come into half moon, bend your front knee, shift your hips over your front leg, and extend your left heel straight behind you. Ooh, I'm falling over. If you have a block, you're welcome to use your block. Any height of your block will do. Just like in triangle pose, as I've mentioned, we really want to twist our hips, make sure that your left heel is in line with your left leg, and your right hip is stacked directly on top of your right heel. Shoulders are square. If I personally like twisting and looking to the side. If you'd rather look down at your mat, you can. If you want to look up towards the ceiling, you can and be crazy. Really extend your left heel farther back behind you. One more inhale. And then exhale, slowly set back into your warrior two. My front leg is on fire. Inhale, reverse triangle. Press through your front leg and stretch back. And then exhale, low lunge twist. Left hand down, right arm high. Hold here. So from here, drop your right left knee, excuse me, your left knee down to your mat and release the top of your foot. Now turn your right toes out to the side a little bit. Your toes will hang off of your mat. Place your right hand on your right side. Now push your chest away, finding a little arch in your spine and you'll find a little bit more stretch in the front of your hip so that you can twist almost to look over your right shoulder. From here, if this feels like enough and this feels comfortable, stay where you are. If you want a little bit more, you can bend your left knee, pulling your heel towards your butt. As you pull your heel towards your butt, careful though that your hips don't shift back behind you, you still want to press your hips forward. If you want a little bit more, you can reach behind to grab your foot and pull your knee in towards your chest. Or excuse me, pull your heel in towards your butt. <laughs> Wrong body part. Um, but again, make sure that your butt doesn't come back behind you. You still want to find a lot of length in the front of your hip. Good. Hold for two more full breaths. One more inhale. And then exhale, release all that back down into your plank. Option to move through your flow, flush it out the energy, or just press straight back into downward facing dog. Let's take one full breath in our downward facing dog. Inhale through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. One more side. Inhale, lift your left leg high. Exhale. 
Exhale, left knee to left elbow. Hold and breathe for three, two, and one. Inhale, lift your left leg high. Exhale, left knee to right elbow. Twist and hold for four. Maybe even look to your right side. Two, and one. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, crush it, move and drop your right knee, right knee down and extend your arms up. And then exhale, bring your hands to heart center and twist towards the front, or towards your left, excuse me. Keep your hips square to the front. Find length in your spine. As you pull your right ribs over, pull your left ribs back behind you. One more inhale. And then exhale, unwind into your half foot. Flex your left foot. Pull your toes back behind you. And then from here, if you want to start to slide out into your full splits or just a deeper variation of your half splits, you're more than welcome to. I forgot to say this on the first side, but if you have a block or a pillow and you'd like to place it underneath your um, hips, you're more than welcome to. Reminder to keep your hips square, your legs parallel. Option to flex your uh, right toes and flex your left foot back. And you might find that one side is a little tighter or looser than the other, and that's totally normal. Try not to pass judgment. So this is definitely a pose to help open up your chakra if you're feeling a little stuck, feeling a lack of creativity or a lack of and to put it quite frankly, positive emotions. <laughs> Stay here for two full breaths. See if maybe you can release a little bit deeper, keeping your hips square. One more inhale. And then exhale, push back into your low lunge. Inhale, caress and lunge, reach your arms high. Exhale, prayer twist, hook your right elbow on the outside of your left knee, hold for a few breaths. If balance feels a little challenging, you can drop your right knee down, no problem. Really ring out your spine, relax your shoulders down your back. One more inhale. And then exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse try, or sorry, reverse warrior, press your hips forward and reach your right uh, left arm out behind you. And then exhale, triangle pose, straighten through both legs, tick tock your arms to 12 and six. Option to stay here, I'm gonna scoot back a little bit, or you can bend your front knee, shift over into your half moon. Your choice, stack your right hip on top of your left. Careful that your right leg doesn't fall down. You wanna engage the outside of your glute so that your heel is directly in line with your hip. Now you can float your fingertips, you can place your hand gently on your shin, or you can have a block, or fingertips can touch your mat. Stack your shoulders and your ribs. Imagine you're lean, leaning up against a wall behind you. Good. Hold for one more inhale. And one more exhale. Inhale, reverse triangle, gently float your right leg down and extend your left arm back behind you. Inhale, exhale, cartwheel back down into your low lunge twist. Right hand down, left arm high. Stay here and take a few breaths. Now turn your left toes out to the side. Maybe your foot hangs off of your mat and that's okay. Drop your right knee down if you're not already there. Press your hand against your thigh and imagine there's like a, be a beach ball behind you that you want to lay your spine onto. Maybe even twist to look over your left shoulder. If this feels like enough, stay where you are. If you want to squeeze your heel towards your butt for a deeper quad stretch, you're welcome to. Again, careful that your butt doesn't stick back behind you. If you want to reach behind to grab your foot for an even deeper quad stretch, you can. Don't let your ego get in the way. Do what feels best for you. And you might find that the same variation feels different on this side due to more flexibility or less flexibility. Try not to pass judgment. 
Just notice how you feel. Two more full breaths. One more inhale. And then exhale, slowly unwind. Option to move through a flow to flush out any um, excess energy. And then downward facing dog is where we meet. Inhale, bend both knees, look forward. Exhale, walk your feet onto the outside of your hands to set up for Malasana squat. Drop your tailbone down, pull your elbows to the inside of your knees, and sit up nice and tall. From here, you can stay in your Malasana squat working on the length of your spine, or if you want to turn your legs parallel and go into crow pose for a little bit, you're welcome to. I personally like to turn my toes parallel and then my knees are already pretty much tucked into my armpits and then from there you can shift forward maybe one leg maybe both legs or maybe just playing around with balance you could also do your crow pose in malasana squat with your elbows on the outside of your knees um, leaning forward this way but you won't find as much tilt and you won't be able to straighten through your arms as much which is fine but just know that it's a slightly different variation and again, if you want to just sit in Malasana squat, maybe close your eyes, you're welcome to as well. I'm going to give you another 60 seconds on your own. One more full inhale. One more full exhale. And we'll transition into a wide-legged forward fold. Turn your pants to touch down, turn your toes parallel, so your feet will hang off of your mat. And just hang forward in your forward fold with your legs wider than your mat. Let your head relax. Pour a little bit more weight into your toes. If you want to hold on to the outsides of your elbows for a ragdoll variation, you can. You can also just let your arms dangle like empty coat sleeves. You can hold on to your ankles to pull you forward if you want. One more inhale. And then exhale, shift some weight into your hands so you can heel toe your toes right underneath your hips. We're going to do standing forehead to knee. So I don't really do this kind of pose too often. Um, because I like to work with having a long spine, but now we're doing whatever we can to get our forehead to our knee. So you can bend your knee as much as you want. I personally like to have my hands on my calf to help pull in. You are going to round your spine, and you can bend your knees as much as you want, so you can really try and get forehead to touch your knee. It might touch a little bit below your knee, and it might not actually touch, and that's okay too. But that's our goal. We're trying to curl our spine to touch our forehead to our knee. And then be aware of where the weight is in your feet. Even though we're bending our knees, try not to shift too much weight into your heels. Continue to pour weight into your toes. And for some of us, we might feel like we're going to fall over. I encourage you to spread your toes nice and wide. You know, hold here for one more inhale. And then exhale, slowly release, and you're going to roll all the way up to standing. Take your time. That can be a pretty intense one for your low back. Inhale, mountain pose, reach your arms high. Exhale, thumb with feet to key, bring your hands to heart center. Close your eyes, pause for a moment. Let your tailbone drop down. Feel the length in your spine and the crown of your head floating up. Inhale, mountain pose, reach your arms high. Exhale, forward fold, lift your tailbone, and let your head float down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plank pose, step your feet back. Exhale, child pose, drop your knees down, and reach your hips back behind you. 
Let your forehead rest on your mat. Take two breaths here just to ground down. Send your energy and your awareness to your sacral chakra right around where your belly button is. One more inhale. And then exhale, walk your hands in to roll up one right away at a time. Shift your hips towards one side and swing your legs in front. Good. So from here we have three different options. Option one is you would cross your right ankle onto um, right above your left leg and reach down towards your foot. That would be option one. Option two is fire log or double seated pigeon. So you'll cross your shins on top of one another and walk your hands forward. Option three is half cow face where you'll stack your knees, make sure that your hips are square, and then same thing, walk your hands forward. So whatever feels most comfortable for you, if you're unsure, you can just play Goldilocks and come into the seated figure four, right ankle on top of your left leg and reach down towards your toes. And then if you feel like, mm, I don't feel enough stretch on the outside of my hips, then you can go into the fire log or double pigeon. And then if you need to move forward from there, you're welcome to. A common, um, I don't like, want to say mistake, but a common thing we do wrong <laughs> is um, we let our right foot kind of fall in. So make sure that your top right leg in fire log is fully stacked over that you could still flex your foot. So try not to let it sink in. And then from there, maybe you want to reach forward. Maybe it's just simply crossing your forearms on top to send a little bit more pressure forward. Whatever feels comfortable for you. And we'll stay here for quite some time. So just get comfortable. Take some deep inhales and deep exhales. Maybe even close your eyes. And don't, again, don't worry about the length of your spine. I usually preach and talk about having a long spine here, but if you want to let your head relax and round your spine a little bit, that's okay. And if your eyes are not already closed, I encourage you to close your eyes. Bring the tongue to the roof of your mouth so your jaw separates. Keep your jaw where it is and release your tongue from the roof of your mouth. Using your ujjayi breath, your inhale and exhale through your nose. Two more breaths. One more inhale. Slowly come up and straighten both legs. Give your legs a little shake, maybe a little rotation in your thighs. And then when you're ready, second side. Option again for your seated figure four, your left ankle on top of your right leg, or double pigeon or cow face. I recommend you do the same variation you did on the first side. Again, it might feel a little different and that's okay. Folding forward, this is typically the point in class where our mind starts to wander, especially when we focus on the outside of our hips. As I mentioned before, your hips hold a lot of emotions, so it's very common and easy for emotions to bubble up to the surface and for our mind to focus and concentrate on said feelings. And I'm not asking you to like stuff your feelings down at all, but I'm asking you to keep an open mind and clear mind. So when thoughts and emotions bubble to the surface, try not to have too much attention on them. Just recognize, acknowledge, let them be, and then refocus your thoughts or your um, energy on your breath, on your stretch, on your sacral chakra. is after a few breaths maybe you can walk your hands a little farther or release over your legs a little more careful that we don't have too much weight forward that our tailbone lifts off of our mat 
take your whole hips on your mat. sacral chakra is where we begin to explore our relationship with ourselves and also our relationship with others. It's instrumental in processing our emotions, which is why we often experience rushes of emotions when we're working with hip openers or forward folds or focusing more on our chakra. One more inhale. And then exhale, slowly come up, straighten your legs, give your legs a little shake, a little rotation. And then shift your hips forward, bend your knees, inhale your arms forward. Exhale, slowly roll down for eight, relax your shoulders, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, hug your knees in towards your chest. Gentle rock from side to side. Keep your spine long. And then you can come into whatever inversion feels most comfortable for you. Maybe you want to come into a simple bridge pose, or maybe you want to have a block or a blanket or a block or a pillow underneath your tailbone for supported bridge pose. Maybe you're feeling a little bit more open in your spine and you'd like to come into plow pose or shoulder stand, whatever feels comfortable for you. If you're near a wall, you can also slide up against a wall for um, legs up the wall. And if you're in plow pose, if you'd like to do a death man variation, you can bend your knees and try and pull your knees close towards your ears. If you're in shoulder stand, really stretch the balls of your feet up towards the ceiling, trying to open in your hips. Good, hold for one more inhale. And then exhale, slowly release, roll your spine down. You can bring the soles of your feet to your mat and let your knees sway from side to side like windshield wipers. Inhale your legs to a reverse tabletop position. Tee out your arms. Exhale, let both knees fall to your left and look towards your right. Pause here and notice how you feel in this position, remembering we did this in the very beginning of our practice. Notice how you feel now. If you want to place your left hand on your right thigh to help deepen the stretch, you can. If you want to extend your top right leg and hold on to the inside of the outside of your foot for a little deeper stretch in your glutes and your spine, you're welcome to. Careful that your hips don't swing too far to the left. You still want your hips to be in line with your ribs and your shoulders. One more inhale. And then exhale, release and slowly come back to center. Pause for a moment, realign into your 90 degree angle with your legs if you need to. Inhale. And then exhale, drop your knees to your right and twist to your left. Place your right hand on your left leg if you wish. If you want to extend your left top leg and hold on to your foot, you can. Make sure that your hips are still squared and in line with your shoulders. If you choose to extend your top leg and hold on to your foot, Push your hip away from your shoulders. One 
one more inhale. And then exhale, slowly come back to center. Come into a happy baby once again. If you want to take your two peace fingers around your big toe, you can. You can also hold on to the inside or the outside of your feet. Really anchoring your tailbone down, pulling your knees in towards your chest. If you want to extend one leg and then the other, you can. If you want to rock from side to side, you can. Or if you feel like curling up into a ball is what's going to be a little bit more appropriate, you can do that too. And then when you're ready, you're going to fully release your legs and we're going to take our Shavasana in our Supta Baddha Konasana today. So the soles of your feet together and your knees wide. Relax your arms down by your side. If that you feel any pain, you're welcome to straighten your legs. Or if you have a pillow or a yoga block, you can place your blocks or pillows underneath your knees for support. Take a moment to close your eyes, settle your breath. Settle your body. Scan your body from head to toe. Notice how you feel in this moment. And send your energy and your awareness to your sacral chakra, again right around where your belly button is in your lower abdominals. And the color that represents the sacral chakra is orange. So with your eyes closed, try to picture the color orange. If you're still seeing darkness, you can envision orange things. Orange is your favorite shirt or a blanket or a scarf that's orange. Without too much focus on what the object is, just envisioning it so you can see the color orange. When our chakra is out of balance, we might feel restlessness and a lack of creative inspiration. We can also feel slightly deflated, loss of control. And when we're in balance, we feel joyful centered and at peace. You can experience your emotions fully and be able to process them fully. There is contentment in what you have and yet a freedom to desire something new without attachment to results. sacral chakra is in line, we are able to forgive easily, so we're willing to share and gift. And there is no judgment and an overall clarity of intention that makes ourselves and others feel motivated, strong, and emotionally stable. And I'm going to give you a few moments on your own. Still envisioning the color orange. And if it's difficult for you to envision the color orange, then you can take your energy to your sacral chakra, right? And 
in your lower abdominals where your hip and lower reproductive organs are. I'll tell you when it's time to come out. If you have the gift of time and you'd like to stay where you are, please honor yourself and do so. If you'd like to complete your practice, if you feel like you are ready, you can start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Maybe extend your legs gently. Maybe stretch your arms overhead. your time when you're ready you can roll towards one side whatever side feels most comfortable for you allow your head to rest allow your spine to be soft use the strength of your arms to push yourself up into a comfortable seated position, it doesn't matter which way you face. Bring your palms to touch, your thumbs rest on your breastbone. Take a moment to feel the warmth in between your palms. And then turn, keeping your eyes closed, turn your fingers to face forward and start to rub your palms together to create a little bit more heat and energy in our palms. See if you can rub a little bit faster for three, two, and one. Place your hands around where your sacral chakra is, right below your belly button. Feel the warmth in your palms, touching your lower abdominals around where your sacral chakra is to send a little bit more energy there. You can slowly let that dissolve. Bring your hands back to touch your thumbs, rest on your breastbone. Bow forward. Thank yourself for making the choice to make it to your mat to work on your mind, your body, and your spirit. Until next time, namaste. Yay. Thank you, Yogi.